Digivolving! Do it! That's it! Digivolve! I order you to Digivolve to Mega! Number 20, giving into the ghoul, Tokyo Ghoul. Trapped and continually tortured by a sadistic monster with a Friday the 13th fetish certainly has a way of putting someone in a bad headspace. The Chinese red-headed centipede. Nasty little shit. I'm gonna let him run around in your ear for a little while. You don't mind, do you? With Yamori's constant mutilations combined with Reze haunting his mind, Kaneki's humanity slips away, resulting in him embracing his newfound ghoul nature, leading him to turn the tables on his tormentor. I've got you now! Not only is he able to power through Yamori's transformed state, but he gives him a taste of his own fearful medicine by digging into him for dinner. Remember, you're the one who tried to eat me first. So you'll get what's coming to you. When I eat you instead. Number 19, Bam Snaps, Tower of God. One does not simply injure the beloved of an alpha simp. With the crown game coming to a close, Rachel suffers a lethal head wound when one of the masked combatants tries to take the throne from Bam. Overcome by such a sight, Bam's irregular nature kicks into gear and unleashes such a vast amount of high-tier Shinsu that it cleaves out one of the navigator's eyes. Thankfully, the Black March chose to interfere before he totally lost it and tried to end her life as revenge for Rachel. Yeah. How's that attitude working out for you now, Bam? Number 18, Roll the Dice, Goblin Slayer. Don't you just love it when your party is on its last legs, only for you to land that all-important critical? <laughs> Despite getting his body severely damaged by a goblin champion, the titular adventurer refuses to simply lay down and die. Instead, with nothing more than some hair and one hell of a second wind, he climbs atop the beast and strangles the ever-loving Gimli out of it until it suffocates. Pretty impressive for a man hemorrhaging a colossal amount of blood behind that helmet. <laughs> Number 17, The Manslayer Returns, Roroni Kenshin. There are very few things that can push a changed man like Kenshin to revert back to the demon he was during his assassin career. Threatening to slice down a child just happens to be one of them. With Sho willing to use his bladed whip on an innocent, Kenshin is pushed to his limits, resolving to use the killer techniques of the Hiten Mitsurugi Ryu. If not for the reveal that he had been in possession of the reverse blade the whole time, Sho would be missing the lower half of his body from just one slash. Number 16, Dark Digivolution, Digimon Tamers. As heartbreaking as it might be to see something as adorable as Gilmon be turned into a grotesque data packet, that's what you get when you delete their friends right in front of them. He's Digivolving! Do it! That's it! Digivolve! I order you to Digivolve to Mega! In the wake of Leomon's demise, Takato embraces his malicious side and forces Gilmon to transform, which prompts a sudden digivolution to Megidramon, a mega level that is nigh uncontrollable and fixated on devouring his targets. No! 
As with most things in Tamers, this was on a whole other level of dark. I must admit, this is not a very attractive sight of you, pineapple head! Oh, now you trolling on me! Number 15, Alpha Stigma, the legend of the legendary heroes. If you know the guy you've captured happens to be the vessel for an entity that can eradicate everything, why would you go out of your way to taunt him by attacking his friends and showing him the corpses of his fellow mages? Whatever the reason, the Magic Knights soon learned they were dealing with a literal devil, since Reiner's despair at such cruelty allowed the Alpha Stigma to take over, where it proceeds to do what it does best and erase everything in its sight, in the most gruesome way possible, of course. <laughs> Number 14, Advance vs. Removal, Kengan Ashura. If I want to beat this guy, I have to take a loan. Throughout the Kengan tournament, driven by his desire for revenge, Oma continuously relied on the double-edged sword that was the Advance, a power boost that could improve his strength, but at the cost of his lifespan. While usually able to put some manner of limit on himself, that all went out the window, went up against Ryan Kure, and his equally sinister transformation of removal. Damn, that was fast! A hell of a lot faster than during the first stage! Unable to cope with the taboo descendant's onslaughts, Oma abandoned the warnings of his mentor and allowed the advance to take hold, becoming a crimson-skinned monstrosity in his own right. He got faster again! <laughs> I've been waiting so long for this. Number 13, A Boxer's Wrath, Hajime no Ippo. Despite his cavalier attitude and sickening approach to the sport, Brian Hawk was nonetheless one hell of an obstacle challenge for Takamura to overcome. <laughs> With so much force behind his punches, the champion eventually succeeded in rendering Takamura partially unconscious. Unluckily for him, in doing so, he awakened the beast. Zenbu. Fueled with rage over how Hawk had previously injured Coach Kamagawa, his body acted instinctively and, relying on his training, pummeled the feathers out of Hawk until he was up chucking blood all over the ring. Number 12, The Laughing Arm, Twin Star Exorcists. Nine times out of 10, Rokuro is the nicest kid on the block. He can punch you to hell and back with his impurity arm, but he's still a chipper lad with a massive heart. Unless you're Yuto, then you're liable to get a meteor smash to the face. <laughs> After the one-eyed killer tells Benio he never cared for her as a sister, Roku loses it. <laughs> sure, Yuto still knocks him around like a tennis ball, but it's the sight of our boy's arm howling in murderous glee while his eyes glow like a demon that sticks with us. Number 11, Curse Shield, The Rising of the Shield Hero. Naofumi was already not in the best place mentally given his horrific treatments ever since being dropped into this corrupt kingdom, but watching his cherished talking chicken daughter get gobbled up by a zombie dragon, that's a bridge too far. <laughs> Unlocking the Cure Shield of Wrath, this highly destructive yet all-consuming form was certainly able to burn away the rot of the dragon, but given how it fed on his rage, it also had the unfortunate side effect of blurring Naofumi's perception of friend and foe together, leading to best girl Raftalia being injured in the process. <laughs> Number 12, 
Number 10, Kamui Unleashed, Kill a Kill. Ryuko has never been one to quell her temper during a fight, but it's fair to say that here she went totally off the rails. It's dangerous for your blood to get this hot! If you don't calm down, I won't be able to control myself! Not surprising, since her father's killer suddenly dropped in and happily confessed. Her resulting outrage proves to be so potent that Senkets can't handle it, and consequently mutates her into a monstrous entity complete with boiling blood and way too many teeth. It's a hell of a look for her, just a shame she wasn't able to use it to give Nui exactly what she deserved. That's it, keep going! You're turning more and more into a monster, just how life fibers should be! Number 9, Mob Goes 100. Mob Psycho 100. <laughs> On an average day, this little ball of awkwardness is just about the nicest guy you could meet. At least until you decide to beat up his brother. Then you might want to clear the area, lest you fancy seeing Mob unleash his dark side. <laughs> Koyama learns this the hard way, who for all his bravado and psychic abilities is woefully unprepared for Mob after he reaches 100% pissed off. As we all know, once he's at his emotional pinnacle, there's nothing that can stop him. Evidenced from when Mob sends his brother's attacker right into the ground, face first. Number 8, Monster Card Rampage, Yu-Gi-Oh! You'll pay for that! The world of children's card games is a cutthroat business, something Weevil Underwood learns firsthand when he unwisely jokes that Yugi is gone forever during a duel. Yugi's gone forever! <laughs> no! Despite being armed with an impressive new deck, the bug boy ends up facing the pharaoh's unbridled fury given how he had just lost his partner in crime to the seal of Orichalcos. Attack again! Without Yugi to play spiritual good cop, no one can stop the king of games from attacking Weevil again and again until his life points are well into the minus numbers. Please, Pharaoh, no more! Let me go! Number 7, Meliodas destroys Danaphor, the seven deadly sins. <sighs> well, at least we now know how the Captain of the Sins got his infamous moniker of Wrath. Stay back, this isn't for you, Wandel. <laughs> In order to reclaim his lost demonic power, Meliodas is forced to relive the haunting moment where he lost control of his rage following the death of his beloved Liz. <laughs> Unable to hold back the anger inside, the Dragon Sin's own dark power overwhelms him, reducing the kingdom of Danifor to nothing more than a crater in the process. Look on the bright side, Meliodas. At least your lover got reincarnated into an infant. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Never again! No matter what! Number 6, Hollow Resurrection, Bleach. I will protect you! Apparently, not even a gaping hole in the torso is enough to keep this substitute Shinigami down. While initially overwhelmed by Ulkiura's power, Orihime's cries of despair are all Ishigo needs to claw his way back from death. Only now bearing a much more nightmarish guise, one that comes complete with a lot of predator sound effects and a crazy amount of laser beams. Now more powerful than even the Espada Segunda Etapa form, Ichigo and his inner hollow proceed to rip Ukiura to pieces. Yep, this is all on you, Orihime. Well done. Is that really Ichigo? Number 5 Cemetery Battle Gintama. <laughs> 
Despite being famed for his sword skills, as well as being a demon on the battlefield, Gintoki Sakata is mostly known for acting like a complete doofus, one who always ends up failing at even the simplest of odd jobs. Not in this case. After Otose ends up wounded via the blade of her rival Deva and former friend Jirochu, Gin goes full on white demon. Armed with nothing more than his trusty wooden sword, he easily crushes nearly every gravestone in sight while trying to put Jirochu six feet under. Shimeda. Number 4. Naruto lets the fox out the bag. Naruto Shippuden. The power of the nine tails. We'll admit it was an odd time for Hinata to find the courage to confess her love to a ninja heartthrob, but it at least ended up giving us this epic scene. Because I love you. I always will. While trying to defend Naruto from Pain's assault, the Hyuga heiress finds herself grievously wounded. The knuckle-headed ninja doesn't take too kindly to this, once again losing control to the demon fox inside of him. Now completely taken over by his rage, Naruto instantly goes all the way to Six Tails. Pain may have his own fair share of internal baggage, but he's got nothing on a teen Jinchuriki who just watched his future wife get stabbed. Number 3 Guts Cuts Off His Own Arm Bazik. We had to get a little creative with this one, seeing how bloody rampages are kind of Guts' bread and butter. The Black Swordsman may have angrily sliced his way through plenty of demons and enemy soldiers in his time, but in terms of sheer desperation, nothing tops the time where he was willing to mutilate his own arm to escape the jaws of an apostle. Of course, given how Casco was being violated by Griffith at the time, you can kind of see why he would be willing to go so far. It's a hellish sight to behold, the only thing more unnerving being the savage expression spread across Guts' face. Now that is rage. Griffin! Number 2 Gone vs Pito Hunter Hunter <laughs> You wouldn't have thought a good kid like Gone would have had a dark side. Pito probably thought so too, at least until he decided to taunt him with the corpse of his deceased friend. After discovering that his buddy Kite was gone for good, Gon gives into his hatred and unleashes all of his latent Nen, transforming into an older version of himself equipped with enough strength to match the king of the Chimera Ants. Fueled by the desire to seek vengeance on the wicked kitty, the young hunter proceeds to smash Pito's face to bloody chunks, to the point where the royal guard is left essentially headless. Ouch. <laughs> Number 1 Avero 1 The Beast Neon Genesis Evangelion <laughs> The good news, Shinji got back in the robot. The bad news, it's gone totally feral and developed quite a taste for angel flesh. When one of the alien invaders nearly overpowers them, Shinji pleads for his Ava unit to get a second wind, something that seems to strike a chord with the sentient mecha, leading it to go berserk and slaughtering the angel. All before chowing down. Mm. 
All the nerve agents can do is hopelessly look on as Unit 01 goes primal. This is the beginning. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.